You are the one servicing this order. I need no, your I'm ID. just a driver. You are servicing this order. I'm just a driver. I don't deal with, I, I, I don't have anything between you and me. You gotta call the police now. You got a picture, please, please. No, you stop playing with me. I'm not playing with you. I need to see the stuff. There you go. You got your stuff. I mean, I can't even see in. I don't know you that I- see it? You, you did everything. 30, uh, two hours I, ago. I can't- I let you do everything, you so are, please. You are physically holding our possessions. No, no, that's it now. Now I have to leave. You didn't give me my, my balance. That now now you start playing with me no, because that, that was no, very you nice. Must, you listen to me. That balance no. is not due for three days. What's your last name, Omar? Bye bye, Steph. Alright, we're stolen our stuff. Alright. Well, we have more numbers to call. <sighs> hey, guys. Well, since the last video, the movers have come and they ended up stealing our stuff. Except that wasn't actually the mover, he was the driver. Mia's mom unknowingly hired a broker company. They did not disclose they were a broker. They hired this other moving company, and then that moving company hired some other company to actually move the stuff and deliver it. We, we do not owe them another $5,000, which the contract agrees with, and we actually had an officer present because we knew they were going to be trouble. They've had over 50 complaints, and the company's only been around since February the movie, the middle company. We had an officer come out and he tried to explain the contract to the driver, but the driver maintained he's just the driver and he can't do anything without getting it authorized by the guys who are uh, not, not the most honest people, I guess you could say. And of course, nobody could be reached during the delivery time. Please hold for the next available mm -hmm. agent. This is just gonna go to the voicemail like it always does. For calling. Customer service. Mm -hmm. So the guy that confirmed the delivery Friday night by Saturday morning, he didn't work for the company anymore. I don't think any of these names are the real names of the people that we have. Actually, before I go any further, if you are dealing with a company like this, please feel free to shout them out in the comments. I'm curious to know. And uh, are they in Florida, New Jersey? Just curious. All right, so if you're just joining us, Mia's mom lives in Oregon in the same house that Mia grew up in, and Mia still has things in that house that Mia's mom would like Mia to take because she's looking to retire and downsize in the near future. So, in August, Mia and I went to Oregon. We visited Mia's family and did some sightseeing. And Mia also spent a lot of time with her mom going through stuff and packing. It was a small amount of things that we were moving. Mia's mom initially got a quote of like, I want to say like 3,500-ish, somewhere in that range, which seemed manageable. And then she was still adding inventory. So then when she updated it, with not that much stuff, the price jumped to like 6,000. So then Mia and I arrived in Oregon. And Mia's like, that's really high. I definitely don't need all this stuff. So then Mia spent about two weeks just going through everything and and consolidating. Mia and her mom are going through Mia's all stuff, and Mia's finding good things. <laughs> oh, look at all the good stuff Mia's finding. And we made like three full trips to the Goodwill, at least three, if not four, like full car loads of things we took to the Goodwill, things went in the garbage, things got combined, you know? So we reduced what was, when we arrived, 515 cubic feet, we reduced it to 262. Oh, wow. Yeah. This looks a lot smaller. Yeah, because I've been going through this and getting rid of some stuff. Oh. Just lots of stuff from Mia's childhood through high school, early college. And some of it she didn't need anymore, and there were some things that she was really happy to still have that she wanted to keep. Mia got an award signed by Bill Clinton. <laughs> Let me see. And Bill Clinton signed this. So now it's September 22nd, and the movers finally show up. At this point, Mia's mom still doesn't know it's gonna be a different company. She thinks it's the original company that she was dealing with who never disclosed that they were a broker because they don't want you to know that. So these new guys show up late, so Mia and I are already back on the road. So it's just Mia's mom that's dealing with the movers. It, it was two stops. It was all the stuff that was in Mia's garage and then they also went to Mia's mother's office. I didn't know this when I did the video, uh, the last video. So a little bit of new info for me. They loaded up everything at Mia's house and then they went to Mia's mom's office to get a desk I think it was just the desk. Anyway, so now the truck is fully loaded at Mia's mom's office 
It's, I think, after 8 p.m. and it's dark. And then they tell her, well, the, the stuff isn't quite fitting the way we thought it was going to, so it's going to be another $10,000. And if her mom said no, they were just going to dump the stuff, like, right there in the parking lot, in, you know, in front of her office. So it's not even like it would have been in her home driveway where she could have, by herself, I guess, just dragged everything back into the garage. You know, like I said, retirement age. She knew what they were doing, but she didn't really know what to do about it, because they had everything on the truck, and they said, this is what you owe. But she could see that they hadn't stacked the boxes, so she said, what's up with that? If, if I'm being charged for space, why don't you stack the boxes? And they said, well, we can't really do that because the boxes are fragile and they'll crumble and fall down and things will break or whatever. Like, she knew they were BSing her, but, like, she, she didn't really know what else to do. She gave them another deposit. So at this point, we've overpaid the binding estimate by $2,000. They told her she had 1,250 cubic feet of belongings. 262, we measured. So the way these companies want this to go is the driver shows up, you hand them cash, however many hundreds or thousands of dollars in cash, and then they'll unload the truck. They don't even want you to see the stuff. You can't even look at it until they have the money. They're not going to take credit card or anything that you can dispute later. They want cash. So you give it to them, and they're gone. I was able to see into the back of the truck before giving the driver anything. They don't want you to do that. And we had an officer present, like I said. So, and Julie's parents actually came uh, to witness. <laughs> Associated Press, your oh, document. Wow. Uh, That's quite a blend. Wow. Yeah. Man. And Jerry was there. So we got the truck open and we measured. I'm asking you, you're the driver. You drive a truck, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. You have 1,250 cubic feet in there. 12? 20. That doesn't look like 1,250 to you, does it? Doesn't look like 1,250 to me. No. It was a 26 foot Penske rental truck, 8 by 8 by 26. Half of it was empty. So for the video, you're saying that this is not 12... Wait, this isn't even all There's our stuff in here. Customers. Three, three customers. Three customers yes, is taking up half the truck. Yes, it is a 26-foot truck. Yes, sir. Right. Okay. 8 by 8 by 26. 8 by 8 by 26. And then on top of that, we were one of three deliveries on the truck. So it was physically impossible for us to have 1,250 cubic feet of stuff. The three deliveries that were on the truck combined were under that number. Isn't that incredible? Right? That's not ours. No, the mattress is not no, ours. No, he yeah. said there's three people on there. So. Wow. Yeah, there's three people. There's three deliveries worth of stuff on there. Wow. He's trying to... He's charging him that... On that contract, <laughs> he's charging him for this truck. My guess is he's going to spend that out over all three clients. Yeah. Julie's dad is doing the... 448. The and they told me his mother they couldn't stack things because the boxes would fall over. Looks like they were able to do it. 1,216 square feet. Cubic what is feet. The, that's the, what's in there. That's the entire truck? Okay. Yeah. And that's for the three people. Okay. Yeah, I'd say you're being cheated. <laughs> A little bit. So they're trying to charge us 34 cubic feet more than is on the entire truck for three customers. Isn't that incredible? $14,000 is what they're trying to get out of us. And according to the contract, we don't owe it to them. And according to the contract, we've got 30 days to pay even if we did. So by the driver leaving, which he did, as far as I can tell, a federal crime has been committed here and now they're just holding our stuff hostage. And they're not even like trying to negotiate with us. They just, it's like, it's been five days since the guy drove off. It's not, not even like, uh, give us this money or we're not get, they just, just vanished. And that's it. It's impossible to call these, uh, their 800 numbers and get anybody. But Mia still had some numbers in her phone from, like, people who had called her, like, when we were in Oregon. So we were able to reach somebody that way who picked up. And then the, the next day, they came back with, like, the boss. And I know this guy isn't, like, the boss, but I guess he's, like, higher up in the company. So I tried to exp It's like, when you know somebody is the scammer, and, like, you're trying to talk reasonably to them, and, like, you know that whatever you say doesn't matter because they're scamming you and they know it, and, and then you know it, and... You know they know it, and they know you know they know it, and it just keeps happening. <laughs> Boy, that was the most infuriating 20-minute phone call I think I've ever been on with this guy who... Like, I tried to explain to him what the problem was, and that we don't owe him a balance, and that we don't have as much stuff. But, like, he knows all this. And so, when I said that we saw into the truck, he... he like, he was pretty cool up... Like, not cool. He was keeping calm until I said that we, we saw into the truck. 
that wasn't supposed to happen. He could, he just kept focusing on how did you see into the truck? How do you know how much was in there? How could you know this? How could you know this? And I said, we saw it with our own eyes and we went out with a tape measure and a laser measure and we took measurements and calculated them and figured out how big the truck is, how much space is occupied, how much inventory we had, which we measured ahead of time. It, it's like, he doesn't care. Like the facts don't matter. What's on the contract doesn't matter. He just, that's just the number that they chose. And I'm like, well, who wrote down the number? Who wrote down the $13,900 in Oregon? He doesn't know. And then am I calling his men liars? Well, who are your men? He won't tell me who the guys are. He doesn't know who the guys are. They didn't sign the contract, by the way. So we don't have the names of the people who picked up in Oregon. Nobody knows who they are. They didn't measure anything. They just made up a number and we're being held to the number. So forget the contract, forget how much stuff we have. And he's saying, well, how could I possibly know how much stuff you have? I'm like, you could measure it. You still have it, don't you? I mean, we could show you how to calculate cubic feet if you want. It's, it's not difficult. I, I think Mia said, it's not magic, it's math. I, I don't know where that leaves us now, but we've paid many thousands of dollars to the company to steal Mia's childhood, essentially. Which, by the way, is the second time it's happened to Mia. Poor Mia. She had stuff in, her, I guess, in the attic of her mother's office and her mother... I guess used to have another tenant in there or something, and, and when they moved out, they probably accidentally took whatever it was, like a box or two of, of Mia's, but they never they never brought it back, and Mia had stuff in there that she would she still wishes she had. This is all the rest of Mia's stuff, and they took it. Oh, Mia's finding her plushes. Oh, look at cute little Mia. She loved her stuffed animals. She actually still had some of these. That animatronic Big Bird is actually on the truck. What a cute little thing. And also that beautiful Christmas Coca-Cola train that Mia's mom bought. That's on the truck. I got a new monitor when we were in Oregon so I could see the vlogs I was editing. That's on the truck. The driver made it sound like he was not actually with this company and he didn't like the way they were treating him and he said he's gonna make the rest of the deliveries and then just stick the stuff in storage and be done with it so I don't know if he ditched the stuff in some random warehouse and, and like the people who hired him don't even know where it is like who knows All right, I do have this in front of me now okay so in in mid-July Mia's mother was first talking to this broker company and she got a quote based on what she told them, they, they estimated 400 cubic feet, 396 cubic feet, we'll say 400, roughly $3,600, 396 cubic feet. What we ended up with was 262. So it should have come down, right? The binding estimate was based on 515 cubic feet. It was $5,682.72. So we were at 515 the last time. And by the time the movers came, we had reduced it from all the stuff Mia got rid of, 515 to 262 and it went from $5,600 to $14,000 instead of under $3,600. Doesn't make any sense, does it? Makes absolutely no sense. And, okay, so the movers must be able to explain it, right? Nope. They, they just, uh, the guy just says he has no way of knowing. We have no way of knowing. So, and forget what the contract says. Just stick to the number that the guys made up. Who are the guys? He doesn't know. Are they authorized to, to write what they wrote in the contract? Who knows? So that's where we are now. They knew this that the delivery was scheduled. They they were, I think, purposely unavailable. You know, you're not you're not dealing with legitimate people, so what seems like it should be really easy to resolve isn't. So Mia's filling out yet another thing that we're gonna submit. So now now we're gonna contact every last person that will, will listen to us and make as much trouble for these people as possible. It's so needless. Like they could have come out ahead by just dropping the stuff off. Because, like, we don't think we're actually going to get any of that money back. So, like, they were winning. Mm -hmm. Even if they deliver, they were winning. Yeah. Well, now we're going to see just how many people we can find to go after them. That's hostage. Mm hmm Number of days shipment held beyond this delivery. This is for the broker. Okay. Did not provide this information packet. And so on, and so on, wait. and so on. <laughs> it's just keep, <laughs> it just keeps going. This whole goods broker misrepresenting itself as a mover. Website doesn't indicate that they're a broker. Uh -huh. Mover demanded payment for services not provided. The additional 735 cubic feet that does not fail to provide a list of carriers moving companies they use on their website. Mm-hmm. All right, I should probably end here. I, this doesn't even begin to cover it. This is all we've been doing for like the last three plus weeks or so. 
Uh, you know, like, they, they essentially make it so you're a prisoner in your own house. You can't ever go anywhere, because maybe the truck will show up, maybe someone will try to call you, and if you miss the call, you know, like, then you might never get them on the phone again. So, well, at this point, the truck has come. Now we're trying to figure out where did it go. So, all right. We have more things to fill out and people to call. What a pain this has been. And honestly, if you if you talk to some of the other people that have dealt with these people, like, we really don't have it that bad. Uh, like, you know, for some people, their whole life is on that truck. This lady, they drained her savings. It's, it's so disgusting. All right, I'm gonna end here. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Please share this video. All right, good night. Be nice to Jer.